Hello and welcome to episode 28 of Stitched in Sweden. I'm Maria, your host, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as mmonska. The show notes for this week's episode and all the other episodes are on the blog, which is stitchedinsweden.blogspot.com. And our Ravelry group is where you can find um, discussion about uh, this week's episode and uh, where you can put in some questions and suggestions for the podcast. The Ravelry group is also just called Stitched in Sweden. So today I'm going to share with you a little announcement. Um, I'll talk about this week in Stockholm, two works in progress, um, a technique tip, and a little bit of what my upcoming plans are for knitting and the podcast. So to start out with, uh, the announcement is that this week, if you follow me on Instagram, you will already know, but I have released two new patterns, which is very exciting. And I don't know if you can hear the noise in the hallway, but hopefully not. There's a lot of people around because today is Sunday instead of Monday when I usually record. That's because I have school tomorrow. So, anyway, moving right along, um, I have two new patterns that I released this week, which you may have seen if you follow me on Instagram. And the first one is the Maristem Mittens. This is a pattern uh, that's for fingering weight yarn, and you have seen these before, but here they are. And the pattern is all finished and has been released and some of you are already knitting them and it's just lovely to, um, I, well, I know that some of you have bought the pattern already and I am looking forward to when some more pictures start showing up on Ravelry and Instagram so I can see your progress and uh, I really love seeing all the different kinds of yarns that you pick. So um, these mittens I've talked a little bit about before but like I said, they're a fingering weight yarn, and they have this sort of botanical um, meristem pattern on the front, which the meristem is the point at which the plant grows from. And there is a definite left and right hand with the positioning of the thumb, and it makes it so that you uh, don't have that stretch across the middle fabric that you can sometimes get um, when you have mittens that have the thumb gusset straight out the side. Um, and yeah, there are uh, two different sizes that are in the pattern and that's for the circumference. The size is really just the, the circumference and then you can adjust the length obviously to fit your hand. This is the small size and then there's also a medium size which is just a bit bigger than this. Um, but yes, very exciting, and thank you to my two lovely test knitters, uh, Mina from the uh, Knitting Expat podcast, and Olivia from This Handmade Life blog and Instagram. So, yes, Marisam is now available on Ravelry. The other pattern that I released this week is the Arrowhead Socks, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, and you can download it there. I showed you these before. I hope that you remember. There's two of them. Uh, this sock pattern is a top-down pattern that has instructions to give you this extra stretchy cuff if you would like. But if you just want to cast on your normal number of stitches, you can do that too. Uh, there are three different sizes in the pattern uh, for a 56, 64, and 72 stitch leg circumference and then you can adjust the size, like the length of the leg and the length of the foot so that it will fit you best. Um, you can see that there is a little arrowhead or arrow chevron pattern in the sock which is where it gets its name from and this sock has a contrast uh, heel flap and turn the gusset, pick up the stitches for the gusset, and then it has a rounded toe. So, 
that's it. But um, yes, I was really excited to release these two patterns. I was planning on releasing this one later this week, but I was just kept looking at the pictures of it and just I was ready to do it. So um, I was happy to put that out and see that so many of you have already downloaded it, which is really exciting. So yeah, two new patterns are out in the world. Uh, I did want to just make a note from last week. I was talking to my mom earlier this week and she said that there was a strange um, repeating section of my podcast last week, which is because I uh, got up in the middle to stir my lunch, dinner, whatever. Uh, that I was making and I so I stopped my video and I started re-recording again I started recording again which was fine because it was like two minutes later so I knew exactly what I had said um, but when I finished that recording only the first half of the podcast was on my computer only before I had stopped to stir my dinner only that part was on my computer and I couldn't find the other file so at that point it was an hour or two after I had finished recording so I had to sit down again and record the second half over and I didn't watch the whole first part to see exactly what I had said um, so I ended up accidentally repeating myself of course then after it was done being edited and on its way to being uploaded the other file the second half of the podcast appeared on my iPad. No idea where it came from, but it was there. But then I didn't put that, it was already, you know, the episode was already finished at that point, so it is what it is, but in case you just wondered what was going on, that's what happened. So, anyway, thank you for all of you who uh, suggested patterns this week for my three colors of loft that I have. Um, I have not decided what pattern I will be knitting because there have been a lot of really beautiful patterns suggested for the three colors. And I think that I will likely do something that has the, um, the white, whitish cream and then the, so that's fossil and then wood smoke is kind of the oatmeal color. I think I'll probably stripe those two and then have the button jar in some sort of uh, edging or something. Still not totally decided, but will definitely be something and I hope to start it soon. So uh, that is just sort of the news and updates, but for this week in Stockholm, um, it has been a busy week. We were out of our apartment for a few days while we had some not fun work done in here, uh, so that was a little bit of disruption, I guess, in the everyday life, but it was really nothing so, so bad, and we are back in, um, back in the apartment now. Uh, I went to my first day, uh, at school, sort of. It was the introduction for international students, and for, I don't really know, actually, because there was also Swedish students there, but, uh, I think the majority of them were international students, which may be because the master's programs are in English. So perhaps they attract more of an international crowd. Not sure. Anyway, I went to that on Thursday and uh, it was okay, but I think that it would have been I think it was m probably most helpful for students who had just arrived in Stockholm and that this was like their first week here in Sweden um, because it wasn't so much information about the school but information about living in Sweden and what you need to do when you first get here in terms of registering yourself and um, getting a bank account and that sort of type of thing so uh, not that helpful for me but I at least got a little feeling of where things were so that on Monday I will be ready for my first class, which is tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to it, of course, a little nervous as well, but um, I think it will be good. So let's see what else happened this week. 
Um, I've been working a bit and knitting. Oh, and yesterday I made corn tortillas, which were delicious, and I also made some enchiladas. Uh, corn tortillas are something that you cannot find in Sweden. I have not, well, okay, you can find a small package for an insane price. Like, let's see, probably six or seven dollars for eight tortillas or something. Uh, otherwise, they are a combination of flour and corn. And if you make enchiladas, you really need corn tortillas, I think. So I, um, one of the moms who I babysit for, she had a tortilla press and she let me borrow it. And I made tortillas for the first time and they turned out excellent. It was a lot of fun and the enchiladas were delicious. So I think that I will be investing in a tortilla press myself and uh, doing that a bit more often. But anyway, uh, how about onto the knitting? So this week I have been working on two projects and one of them I just picked up a couple of hours ago while Thomas and I were watching a movie which was Unbroken um, which is a, a film about, about based on a true story from World War II and I read the book so anyway sidetrack um, but during the movie I finished the toe on my um, first sock, which is the uh, Regia yarn from Arnie and Carlos design line. This is in the Fall Night colorway, and I did a Fish Lips Kiss heel in a cream color, same cream that I used in my Arrowhead socks. And I did a rounded toe, which the white is just really hard to see, but that's it. So I was maybe, I think I was about at the orange part, no, not on this one. I was into the toe when I started the movie, or partway through the movie, and then I finished this toe, and I picked up the stitches where I had held them right after the heel on this sock. I had held the stitches like about here, and I knit down the rest of the way. Um, on the second sock. And so I have lined these up pretty much exactly. And so you can see I just have another inch and a half or so before I start the toe on the second sock. I haven't worked on these in a while, so um, I was at a point on my other whip that I needed to stop and check a couple things before I could keep going. So uh, rather than not knitting for the rest of the movie, I uh, picked up these again and worked on those. So these should be done pretty soon, I would say. Unless they also just kind of, they're, they're sometimes a project that I just set aside and knit when I don't have something else to work on that I, but I wanna keep knitting on something. So we'll see. We'll see when those get done. Uh, those have been, hanging out in my lovely little bird project bag from Lee at Shop Luli on Etsy. And I really love this bag because it is really well made and it has a nice um, sort of heavier weight. Like I, I want to say it's some sort of almost like it's not canvas. I don't really know fabric terms. Um, and then the inside is lined in a heavier weight white, and there's a nice, um, words, I think it's bias tape that covers the cords on the inside. And it's just, it's really nicely finished and really well made. So, um, yes, she sent that to me a little while ago and I shared it before, but... That's where those socks have been living. My second work in progress has been living in my um, large size bag from Deb at Fondant Fiber. And this has my whole sweater in it. So this bag was perfect when we were out of the house and staying over at Thomas's parents' house for a couple days. Um, I could bring this with me and everything was contained and I could 
push the sweater back in there quickly and zip it up if I needed to do something or if, um, yeah, whatever, if I needed to do something, I guess, just so that everything was contained and sort of like out of the way if it needed to be. Because when I'm here, I can leave my stuff out, but if I'm at their house, I don't want to like leave my sweater just on the couch or something, which I might do here. Okay, but in here I have my Cybella Pullover, which is a pattern by Carrie Bozichogue, I think. And this is almost finished. So that's really exciting because last week I had, I knit the sleeves first, which was a really good idea, I think, because I don't think that I would want to be knitting sleeves right now as I'm getting really close to the finish, um, really close to being finished. I knit the sleeves first and then I picked up the body and it's knit from the bottom up. And here it is. So of course it looks a little bit lumpy, but um, because it's been in my bag and just is not blocked at all. But I did put in this little marker of where I was last week when I showed this to you. So you can see that I got to knit all the way up to the yoke and I finished the yoke. I ripped out the yoke a couple of times. <laughs> Actually just, I ripped it out once. But um, yes, attached the sleeves, did the yoke, and now I am on the 2x2 two two ripping on the top. And I'm going to do just a few more rows of that before I uh, find a tubular cast off, which I think will be some sort of sewn cast off or bind off, bind off. I am going to find a tubular version that will match the sleeve cuffs and the body start so that I can have a nice finish on the top. By the way, I'm wearing my Water Lily top, which is a pattern by Megan Fernandez, and I knit this in Drops Baby Alpaca, uh, what is it, Drops Baby Alpaca Silk, I think? Um, yeah, that's what I'm wearing today, in case you were wondering, but you probably already knew that. So, yes, I, where was I? I have a few more rows of the 2x2 two two ribbing to finish. And then I'll do the bind off and then I will um, almost be done. I'll just have, I still have the um, underarm holes, you can see there. I have put the underarm stitches and the sum of the stitches from the sleeve on stitch holders so that I can graft them together with the Kitchener stitch and I won't have a seam there. Uh, I don't usually do that. Usually I just bind off the stitches and then sort of sew them together. But it always looks a little bit sloppy. And for this sweater I really wanted to try to get a lot of the details right. That's why I chose to do the tubular cast on. And um, because I think it gives it a nicer finish and why I've held these armholes and underarm stitches on stitch markers so that I could finish them off with the Kitchener stitch and I won't have a seam there. Another thing that I did on this sweater which I talked about that I was going to do before is I um, did some short rows for the uh, back of the sweater so that I could raise up the back neck a bit and then the, the back neck could ride a little bit higher compared to the front because it is sort of like a, a crew neck. Uh, I want the back to be slightly higher than the front so that the front doesn't ride up on my neck and give that choking feeling. So what I did with that, I will um, try to show you. Um, this is the back. Let me give you a little view of the yoke more there. I really love how it came out and I just went into the kitchen and showed it, I tried it on and showed it to Thomas while it still has the needle sticking out and it's not quite finished because I wanted to see how much more ribbing I wanted to do. And he's like, oh cool, it's like 3D almost. 
I told him that it would probably not be so 3D after I finished blocking it, but it does have a really nice texture to it right now. And um, just like really squishy and cozy. Uh, but yes, you can see the yoke stitches there, the pattern, and this is the back of the sweater. So what I did to uh, raise the back up so that the back is a little bit higher than the front of the sweater is that I knit short rows. And basically there are probably four rows in here right before I start the yoke patterning. There's four rows on the back in stockinette stitch that don't exist on the front of the sweater. And those, adding those four rows can push up the back of the sweater just a little bit because you're lengthening the back of the sweater um, right after you attach the armholes. And then I also added two extra rows directly at the top of the neck. And for this sweater, I was a little bit unsure of how I was going to do that because the patterning really does go all the way up to the front, all the way up to the collar. But if you looked really carefully, you would notice on the front side, there are two, yeah, like, okay, it doesn't really, you're not going to be able to see it really well. There's two pearl bumps rows on the front side. And there's three, one, two, three, on the back side because I added an extra row just on the back side so that it would raise up the back of the sweater just slightly. So, because it's kind of hard to explain, I'm going to try to show you a little diagram that I've drawn. This isn't a full tutorial explanation, but I hope that it helps you understand what I mean when I'm talking about short rows. Okay, so, one sec, let me fold this over. So here you have your sweater. And this is the back of the sweater. So uh, if you think of this as the back of the sweater and you could see this line that I've drawn here is where your yoke starts. So that's where you start the patterning. And then this part up here is where the ribbing is for the neck. Now when you knit this sweater, which is from the bottom up, but it doesn't matter if it's from the bottom up, you could do the same thing if it was top to down. So I'm knitting along, knitting along, mm -hmm. back and forth, back and forth, like up here, right? Not back and forth, sorry. Oh. I'm knitting along in the round, in the round, in the round, all the way up to here. I attach the sleeves, and then on the very next round, instead of going all the way around and knitting all the stitches on the sweater, I start, okay. I start here, so you're like knitting in the round and then you're going to knit straight. So from over here, I knit across and when I get to this point, which is not quite at the underarms but maybe 10 stitches away from the underarm, I did a twin stitch so that I could, or a short row, whatever, so that I could turn around and purl all the way back, did a twin stitch, so I could knit all the way back, and I didn't go all the way back, went almost all the way back, turned, did the twin stitch, and then I went all the way, kept going around the rest of the sweater, came back around, and knit and each time in that last round, any time I came to a double stitch, I picked up, I like completed the short row, so I knitted those two stitches together, or whatever, depending on what short row method you're working. Then, so then at that point, I'm just knitting around and around and around. Up the yoke, keep going. So you get extra rows of fabric that are only on the back of this sweater because when you're knitting those rows you're only knitting back and forth instead of going all the way around and knitting the stitches also on the front. I did the same thing when I came up to the very back of the neck like I said 
instead of going all the way around on one row, I went just across, turned, just across, and then I kept going all the way around the sweater and starting the ribbing. I don't know if that helps you at all, but um, I did have another explanation of short rows in a previous episode when I was talking about my mom's tunic that I did short rows for, uh, and I can't really find my diagrams that I used for that, but those might have been better. Anyway, um, if you're interested in learning more about short rows, it would be really helpful for me if you have specific questions, and then I might be able to do a video um, where I talk about just short rows and how to use them in sweater modification. So let me know. Um, but yeah, so I've been working on that sweater and I have just a couple more rows, like maybe three, before I'm going to do the bind off and then sew up the armholes and block it. So it will be all ready, I'm sure, by next week, which is really exciting. Um, the yarn that I knit this sweater out of is the Quinson Company Chickadee, which is 100% American wool. And um, I knit it in the Egret colorway, which is just a natural color. I don't even know if it's dyed. Uh, but yes, this is Egret. It's a nice cream. I would say like yellowy cream, but it's not yellowy, but um, like compared to white, it looks more yellow, if that makes sense. Warm, maybe? Warm cream? I don't know. So many different <sighs> colors to describe white or cream. Anyway, so far I have used six 50 gram skeins, and this is how much I have uh, left of the sixth one. So I will think, I think that will be enough. And I also have, I think I have two small balls like this. I only see one right now, but I think I have two small ones like this, which were what was left from the 50 grams when I finished the sleeves. Each sleeve took 50 grams, minus this little, these little blobs. Oh yeah, there's the other one. So I have two of these left. So I should be able to finish this sweater with six 50 gram skeins of this sport weight, which has 181 yards or 166 meters in 50 grams. So that's pretty nice because I will have one of these left over. Anyway, uh, moving on, I do not have a uh, finished object this week, um, but I think next week I might have to. We'll see. But uh, yes, so un upcoming. This week I will be starting school, and you can imagine, or I, w I am imagining that I might be a bit more busy. I have gotten my schedule, and I will be in school from 9 to 4 most days, every day. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to be a lot of, of school time, and which is good, but uh, it will be less knitting time. And so uh, what that will mean is that I might not have something to show you every week, um, but I am hoping that I can still stay on a pretty regular weekly schedule. This week I'm trying out recording on Sunday because usually I record in the middle of the day on Monday, but... Tomorrow I will be in school and all other Mondays from now on. Uh, so I'm going to try doing recordings on Sundays and see how that works out. Um, but I'm just going to have to see with my schedule how it goes. And um, I'm sure you will understand that. I hope you do, anyway. But I am sure that I will not stop knitting because when I first started knitting was when I was in my undergraduate um, studies at, in the US. Uh, I basically started knitting almost when I started school. 
and I was pretty productive knitting and in school, so I could do them both. It helps that I can knit and read at the same time, um, but it will just, you know, whatever. It just depends. That being said, I'm hoping that I can finish off this sweater today so that I can have a finished project um, and just feel like I accomplished something so that I don't know why. I think it will be a nice way to start school which, with a, a good accomplishment. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to knit next, but I like I don't know what I'm going to knit directly next. I would like to maybe plan another project today or even cast something on just so that I have something going um, so that when I come home from school I feel like there's a project already going that I can just knit on and I don't have to plan for um, so that I can feel like I'm being productive with my knitting time instead of coming home and thinking like, oh, I don't have enough time to think about starting something uh, because it's going to take too much time to plan it or whatever. It would be nice to just have something already ready and on the go so that I can pick it up and not have to um, think too much about it in the beginning, anyway. So uh, I'm going to think about that a little bit later today. But I'm also working tonight, so we will see. Anyway, today is a lot of blabbing on. Um, some upcoming projects that I will be working on in the near future are uh, two little children's sweaters um, that I will be knitting for um, Thomas's niece and nephew. Uh, their parents have requested um, two little sweaters. Uh, I have knit both of them things in the past. Um, Theodore is just going to be three next week and he I, I knit him a sweater I think when he turned two uh, which was the, oh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was the Gramps cardigan. And I think he got a lot of wear out of that, but he is quite a bit bigger now, so uh, it's time for a new sweater. And his sister, um, she is just six months old now, and uh, I knit the Little Hearts cardigan for her. Um, but she also needs a new sweater. So I am going to be knitting two new sweaters for them. And um, they, well, I don't really know what to say about it, but basically there is a knitting tradition in Sweden called Bohus tradition, the knitting in the Bohus tradition. I don't know exactly how to say it or what it means. I think that means like living house. Not really sure. But I need to read some more in this book, which is written in English and uh, published by Interweave Press, um, which is pretty funny because that's Interweave Press is really close to where I used to live in Boulder, Colorado. I think Interweave is in Loveland, Colorado. Yep, Loveland, Colorado. Anyway, so. This book is all about uh, the women who started this Swedish cottage, cottage in industry, which was knitting in this specific, mostly color work tradition, and how they really didn't have an income at that point. Started Bohu Sticking was born out of one of out of one remarkable woman's attempt to provide relief work for local women during the depression in the 1930s and 40s. Um, Emma Jakobson's primary objective was to find a product that women could produce at home while they cared for their families, one that they could sell to supplement their family's income. And so she basically started knitting these sweaters and selling them. And she was selling them for, I mean, she was selling them for what they were worth, really, uh, which was 
a lot of money at that time. And they became basically sweaters that were only available to the very wealthy and to Americans, actually, who came over, or, um, yeah, foreigners who would come off the boats and buy these beautiful sweaters, which I believe were originally made out of Angora um, yarn. So, yeah. Anyway, I will be knitting two sweaters that are sort of in this style. Um, one for each of the kids, and I'm going to be doing a, a yoked sweater for them. I'm thinking about doing it top down so that I can make sure directly that it will fit over their heads, because that could be a problem. Um, and one of them, for Theodore the boy, will be sort of like this sweater. It's a little bit tricky to see, but basically it's the idea of this really gradual transition of colors. So the body of the sweater will be black, and then this one has a bit of like brown colors in it. Um, but the one I'm going to make him will be black, dark gray, mm, light gray, black, dark gray, light gray, I think medium gray, and white. So I think there's four different colors, maybe. And then for his sister, I'm going to be knitting a pattern that's also kind of traditional and well-known in this style. And that is called the Swan. And it is this pattern here. And her sweater will be light gray with two different colors of red for this patterned yoke part. So uh, this was a really interesting book to look at, uh, to see the different patterns. A lot of really geometric patterns, um, the color work, of course. But some of them have like really, really geometric shapes, which also the shapes of the sweater is more indicative of that time, I think. Um, like this picture I think is just really funny. But these sweaters were really, um, they were really, I think, a sign of class in that time. So anyway, I will be uh, using the ideas from this book to create two new sweaters with, um, with this knitting tradition in mind and um, using some slightly modified versions of the patterns for making two little baby sweaters. Well, one baby sweater and one toddler sweater. So that should be exciting. And I have ordered the yarn. Uh, I ordered the yarn yesterday. I've decided to knit it in the Yaku 416 because it is a really soft um, superwash yarn and it's fingering weight. I have this little, this is what I've been playing with. This little uh, sample that they sent me last time I ordered from them with all the colors, so I was able to, um, which was like really nice actually, I was able to look and see what colors I want to use for the sweaters and pick them out, see what they look like. So I'll be using that light gray for the body and then those two colors of red for the yoke for the smallest sweater, and then for the other sweater, I will be creating that kind of gradient that goes from dark to light to dark again using these colors, so nice grays and white on the top there, black too. So I think it will be really fun. I will need to do some measuring and some math to figure out the sizing that I want to do because I, there are no uh, children's patterns in that book, they're only for adults, and honestly, like, even if I was going to knit an adult sweater out of there, I probably would just use the color work pattern and redesign the shaping of the sweater, just because, uh, just for, like, a more modern fit, I guess. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to, going to be doing a top-down yoke, I think, for both of those, and I will show you how that goes, and I'll show you when the yarn gets here. But until then, I'm going to try to figure out a 
new project to cast on today, finish off my uh, Cybella pullover and enjoy the rest of the Sunday. So I hope you are having a lovely week, I hope you have a nice weekend, and I always love hearing from you. So uh, until next week, hopefully it will be next week, like I said, we'll see. Until next week, happy knitting. Bye.